Hello everybody, welcome to the third lecture of this unit 4 of module 5, Narrative Medicine. This lecture will introduce methods of text analysis in narrative medicine. The main approaches to analysis in narrative medicine will be at length. It will also present some software that can be used to support this type of analysis. Finally, some of the options to represent the results in a more attractive way, such as word clouds, will be offered. As we have pointed out several times, the empirical material we work with in narrative medicine are words, text, stories. Once we have transcribed this empirical material derived from the interview, we will have to proceed to a textual analysis. It is really limited in such a short course, in a lecture of only 10 minutes, to be able to explain concretely how narrative content analysis is developed. The most important thing in this type of analysis is practice. And it is as we practice and read this type of narrative that we will be in the best conditions to deal with it in the most appropriate way. Nevertheless, we will try to give some basic notions to generate interest and to give you some references to be able to approach an analysis in a more adequate way. Narrative interviews are, of course, qualitative data and, to some extent, can be approached with any conventional method of text analysis. Narrative analysis itself focuses on the story as a whole, rather than on segment of the text. For this, the most important moment is to read the text in depth, understanding all that it has to express. If we wanted to follow a series of steps in analysis, we could take Mueller's step as an example that describes what he considers to be the five important stages of narrative analysis. Entering the text, preliminary reading and coding to become familiar with it. When coding a text, we can take as initial categories those that have helped us to develop the interview, but we must be attentive to possible emerging categories that appear during the reading of the text. Interpreting. Finding connections in the data through successive readings and reflection. It is important that the different categories that appear in the text are contrasted with the literature that has already worked on the issues we are dealing with. In this step of the analysis, it is important to have enough reading to soap up the subject in order to enrich our interpretation as much as possible. Verifying. Search the text and in other sources for alternative explanations and data that confirm what is being proposed, or precisely the opposite. In this step, it is also very necessary to read and contrast with the scientific literature writing on the topic we are working on. Representing. Write an account of what has been learned point out which are the key ideas that appear in the text to be able to influence them. And for the last illustrating, select representative quotation. The quotations we select should be those that 
most clearly explain what we want to highlight in the collected narrative. These analytical stages can be approached in very different ways, but they all share what Murley calls the focus on the broad contours of the history. For example, the context in which it is told, its structure, the dynamics of how the plot unfolds and any patterns emerging from multiple stories about the same event. Other authors point to other types of textual analysis. For example, Riesman suggests that narrative can be analyzed by conversationally dialogue between narrator and listener, performatively as drama, or politically. The unfolding of events is constrained by prevailing social and institutional norms. For his part, Frank uses a literary framework to analyze narrative in the context of illness. His narrative, he suggests, fall into three basic categories, restitution, quest, and chaos, which correspond to the literary genres of adventure, coping with tragedy, and meaningless. The narrator constructs his experiences speedily as restitutive, heroic, or absurd, using resources such as metaphor, exaggeration, euphemies, and humor. You can delve into the biography on content analysis where you will find more clues for dealing with text that derive from narrative medicine's approach. For this type of analysis, there is different software that can provide technical support in organizing the results. It is important to point out that type of software can never replace the person analyzing the text, as it is in his or her reflexivity and capacity for analysis that the essential thing lies. This type of software is not comparable to, for example, other software uses in statistical analysis, but it can help us to organize the empirical material we work with and to be more systematic in our categorization. Among the best now software among qualitative uh, methodology researchers are Atlas T and Envivo. Both uh, software can provide really important support in the management of the work, but they will not be able to perform analysis automatically. For the interpretation of data in narrative medicine, it is essential that the researcher is in charge of the analysis. Another important aspect has to do with the representation of the data. These representations can often reveal other types of data for our research or for the feedback we give to patients. A very interesting example is the word cloud. A word cloud is a graphical representation of words, concepts, and sentences associated with a passing. The resulting collage is an ad form. A word picture with explained in a more graphic way what stands out in the patient narrative. One interesting project to follow is uh, highlighted in the other resources section of this unit 4. Uh, the name of the project is the Three Wishes Project. We encourage uh, you to visit the, the project website. 
Um, this is the end of lecture three and the end of unit four. We hope you have learned something about the methods used in narrative medicine. Thank you.